Belle Fernanda de la Cruz. I'm a former player and coach of the Philippine national team for women's football, and I'm an advocate for women's sports. I travel a lot and I'm always on the road. I've always been a busy body, never stopping for rest or leisure, not even for my health. I aim to be a real life influencer because I want to reach people on a personal level. Connect with them through my story as a cervical cancer survivor. I was diagnosed six years ago on August 24, 2018. When I got confirmation that it was cancer, one of the first thoughts in my head was, could I have prevented this? I thought I should have gotten checked earlier. Maybe if I wasn't so busy neglecting my health, I could have seen this coming. Before my diagnosis, I was so wrapped up with work and it made it difficult for me to get checked, despite experiencing concerning symptoms like discharge and severe stomach pain. My diagnosis journey wasn't easy. It took multiple tests before I got the final diagnosis. Stage 3B, cervical cancer. As someone who had a close personal experience with cancer because my mom got diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer back then, I knew that an advanced stage 3B can be scary. I took it hard and I broke down. They gave me all the resources and support needed throughout my journey so I was able to focus on getting well. They made sure I was as comfortable as possible and I couldn't have asked for a better support system than them. I went through a lot of difficult moments. I got hospitalized for a month because of complications. But perhaps the hardest challenge I faced was realizing that cervical cancer changed my body so much that I could no longer do what I love, which was sports. I developed neuropathy because of my cancer treatments. I actually still have neuropathy in my feet until now, so I can't kick a ball like I used to before. As someone who started playing football when I was just 12, and the only person in the family who pursued a professional career in sports, learning that my condition changed my physical body that extent was a tough pill to swallow. Sometimes, I wondered if I didn't put off getting checked or if I had known and had gotten vaccinated, then maybe I wouldn't have gone through the same situation. But I don't dwell on what ifs. Because looking back, in spite of it all, I can't help but be grateful for my experience. It gave me a way to help people. And that's why I do this. I talk about my journey with the hopes that I'm able to help even just one person by sharing my personal experiences. My openness, my drive to connect to people, whether to provide information or offer some sort of emotional support by sharing my story is my way of giving back. Because while I may have had everything I needed because of my family and friends, I know that's not the case for everyone. And if I can somehow help prevent what happened to me for someone else, if I can do my part in raising awareness on cervical cancer prevention, then I know that nothing is wasted. But it's a serious condition and demands serious attention. Even though it's a preventable cancer, 12 women in the Philippines still die from cervical cancer each day. That's why I always tell people to do their pap smears regularly. To get checked and not be afraid to find out what's going on with your body. Because if you know it, then you can control it and you can do something about it. Many of us know that with cancer, the earlier you catch it, the better your chances are. And with cervical cancer, you can even prevent it by getting vaccinated. My doctor told me that it usually takes 8 to 10 years for cancer to develop. So it's important to protect yourself with vaccine and screening while you still can. Sadly, not a lot of women know this. We're lacking awareness on cervical cancer prevention in the country. One of the biggest support gaps in cervical cancer, or just cancer in general, is information. I think that if more women could know how to prevent it, preventive programs can be strengthened and we can have a better chance to fight cervical cancer. In an ideal world, other women need not experience what I survive because there are actionable steps we can take to prevent it. But I know that we have a long way to go to get to that point. For now, our hope in building that world rests on all of us. Whether it's by taking personal steps like getting vaccinated, regular pap smears, or in my case, connecting to people to raise awareness. 
and compel them into action so we can all inch closer towards a future free from cervical cancer.